And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, hello to everyone and welcome to the Weighing In Podcast. We've got a couple of shows to talk about and we've also got a fantastic interview with Mr. John Nash about what is occurring with the UFC lawsuit, with the fighters involved. That lawsuit has been kind of frozen for a moment by the judge because he's not happy with how much is actually being left on the table and he wants them to tell tell him why. So there's all kinds of stuff, and we wanted to bring you information on that. So we've got an outstanding interview with Mr. John Nash that is going to come up shortly. And also, go to BetUS. Go to BetUS, and you can get fantastic odds on the upcoming fights that we are going to talk about here. You got the PFL. You got the UFC. UFC 303. Come on. Yeah, it's not Conor McGregor. But you got the Poton, Alex Pahea. Oh, my God. How could you not want to put money down on that, man? We're going to talk about what we think you should do with BetUS. Go to BetUS. Sign up right now, and you'll get a fantastic deal. It's $125. 125% like of your initial deposit. Your, 125%, yes. excuse me, of your initial deposit. So if you have a good-sized deposit, look at yep. what you're getting. It's going to be a fantastic deal, and you know what? We're going to give you information. If you don't listen to us last week, you did good. And you're going to listen to us this week. You're going to do even, even better, better. Even better. Man. <laughs> My man, what's up, dude? That, that was, was long, long-winded. Chama. <sighs> Chama. <Thank you>. Chama. <laughs> Chama. Oh, man. I mean, look, I was reading the comments like I always do. And guess what? They were on me about, man, Josh always trying to sell us something, trying to do this, trying to do that. Don't worry about Guys, it, dude. This is what we do, man. Look, we have we have memberships available through our YouTube channel. Guess what? We've got them signing up, baby. We've got them signing up. Yeah. And I love the fact that people are going in. They're going in deep. They're, we have a tier system at four ninety nine. You guys, we will be doing signed memorabilia. We'll be doing um, giveaways, that type of stuff. So we're going to try to build this up as much as we can. We also have a 199 where you get the icon next to your name when in the comment section. So we know you guys are an actual member and we will be answering your guys' question when we do our live chats. Now we do have some live chats that will be coming probably in the early uh, July, kind of mid July when we cover some of the events, but I want to make sure that we're um, keeping you guys up to date with the most things uh, possible in this sport of MMA. So John, you know, honestly, I'm really excited for this weekend because you want to know why? I feel like the fight card is better now. The fight card to me it's is a fantastic. way better fight card. Don't get me wrong. I was looking forward to the Conor McGregor and Chandler uh, fight. I've been looking forward to it now for about a year and a half. Okay. But yeah. that fight just doesn't seem to be coming to fruition. It's the Tony Ferguson, Habib Nurmagomedov fight. It really it's seems exactly, to be that. That's exactly. It's, it's got the same yeah. elements of... That fight's just never going to happen. There's just bad luck around it. And I'm not I'm not saying that. I'm being honest, though. Josh, I've heard so many things about Connor pulling out. And that, you know, he, he then he came up with saying it was his toe and showed the broken toe and stuff. And, and look, if it is, it's okay. I, I, I don't see where people get all pissed off and say, oh, you should have fought with a, a broken toe. Guys had enough problems with breaks. Okay? And I'm not saying it was only just the broken toe. But if it was... Hey, you know, he was on the, the, the Bellator podcast saying, look, I'm not going to go in uh, if I'm not 100% anymore. I'm not giving these guys any breaks. And I, that's part of his right. And, I, and the people that are, are, are putting him down for it, I look and I go, there's enough problems getting into a fight. It's not easy. And to sit there and say, oh, no, you should go in injured. Well, maybe you should try fighting. It's not nope. easy. No, nope, not no. at the level that he's fighting at, not the guy that he's fighting. No, man, because it's it means a lot. You know, there's a lot. I think to a it. lot of the pushback was uh, the push on him and was just strictly that he gave RDA a big problem or gave him a big um, talked a lot of shit about him pulling out. Yeah, but but look at what has happened with him because it is known and Dana's put it out there multiple times that Connor doesn't back out of fights. Connor, you know, Connor, you know, he's injured. He's still going to fight, you know, and it, it kind of was that way. And as you get a little bit older, it works against Absolutely. you. Absolutely. You know, and, and when you're, when you're fighting really good people, you know, that you don't want to give them those little percentages and I don't blame him for it. I, you know, I'm not sitting there saying, Hey, 
that that's the only reason, but it's the reason that he gave. And if that's what it is, I'm okay with it. And, you know, I, I would, I would like to see that fight, but somehow I think it's the broken toe fight. It's just not going to happen. I, my, my, my holdout is the sphere. That's my last one. My holdout is the sphere. Chandler came out today and said, I don't think they're going to coming in soon. New date coming in soon. And right. we're going to see what that Boom. new date is. And uh, we're going to have to go from there. But look, ultimately, um, I don't want to see any fighter fight hurt. Now, I know we all go in with little injuries. Yeah. I know that. But look, everyone's like, oh, it's a broken toe. It's not a big deal. Oh, no, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Okay. It if is. If you ever, you know, especially if you use yeah. kicks as one of your weapons, it's a big deal. It Joe hurts. Rogan came out and was like, look, for the amount of kicks that he uses, and that's a big weapon in his game, yeah. he understands why he pulled out. I, I just, I was just uh, laughed because RDA came out with some responses. I broke my foot. You broke your toe. You know, yeah, that's true. But but it was okay that RDA Absolutely. pulled out. And Connor was wrong for sitting there saying something about it. <laughs> you know, he was because he broke his fucking foot. It's hard to fucking do anything in a fight when you're hobbling around with a puffed you're up foot. You're driving that home with the F bomb, huh? He's like, yeah, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going gonna... It was the it double was the, F, the, the double F, F foot yeah. part too. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I, I look forward to the fight. If it does ever come to fruition, I, I don't, I'm, I'm writing it off after the sphere though. I'm writing it off. That's it. I'm done. I'm done with it. It's over. <laughs> so you're, you're going to, you, you go over to my on, side. I, I was on your, it's not going to happen on your <laughs> side. And the I was, we were both the ones in the beginning saying, but I got, it got so close, John, literally a week and a half ago, we were talking about this it fight did. happening. Khabib and Tony got how the, close, like how many times it, the, it was the media day on Wednesday. The, yeah. the media day. Yeah. Thank you. We're talking a couple of days. Some things are just not meant to be. And that fight got Some pulled. Some things are just not meant to be. He tripped. He tripped over I know. cables. Well, that's no, what I'm happens not, when, you're, when you wear sunglasses Dude. indoors. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, you know, it is what it is. But John, you've got the red logo behind you, and I've got the blue logo right now on my chest, like Superman. Yeah, well, I'm not, you know why? Do you I'm know Superman, why? I know. This on the A side, John. I, th I, I think I think the blue. I think the blue side is now the A side. Is yeah, that what you're what I'm thinking? thinking? I'm thinking. Well, you want to change it over? Uh, I can make okay. all the changes myself. Oh, right here, changing it. Oh. Flexing. I'm flexing for all you guys at home, and if you guys are listening in the car, I'm giving you my flexing. Uh, hey, you know what? Before it's either that or he's having some some damn problems. I, I, that could be true as well. Like I am getting older. <laughs> You know, pushing 50 now. <laughs> Look, uh, before we move on, I want to say I, want, I really enjoy Element. Element is one of the, the best electrolyte supplements you guys Fantastic. could possibly use. It's awesome. It has, 100, it has 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams, 60 of, magnesium. milligrams of magnesium. See, I'm, I'm telling you, man, look, my son loves it. I love it. Now him, he's out there right now in the Texas Heat playing soccer, and he actually takes a can with them. They offer the sparkling, so you can take it in the can to go. As you can see, you can also get the packets, so you can just travel in the car with it. Don't have to worry about your kids spilling it in the car as you're driving, depending on how well you drive. Okay? And I'm telling you guys, I had you've had four, four today. today. Well, John, you're out there working in the farm. You're out there working in your house. Dude, I was out in the, dude, I'm, I was out doing a well house and building that. Man, I was dying. Four if of those you drink food. them when they're cold, out of, you know, the uh, sparkling, Fantastic. they're so good. So good. Uh, that first initial one that you would drink, you're gonna, you're gonna. Don't have, drink it. Don't drink it warm. warm. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, John, don't drink it warm, especially when it's hot outside. But I'm it. telling you, if you drink it when it's cold, especially out of the sparkling can, it's amazing. If you do the mixtures, what I'd like to do for my kids is I'll put half a packet in with uh, 16 ounces of water, let them drink that, and then have them, you know, go play soccer, go play, you know, uh, lacrosse, gymnastics, whatever it is. And then the next, after they're done working out, I'll give them the other portion of the, of the mixture in another 16 ounces of water. I try to get my kids to drink at least, you know, four liters a day sometime around, around that area. It's tough for them, you know, but it depends on the day. It depends on the activities. But my daughter. Four liters is a lot. It is. Kid. It is. But you wouldn't believe my son. My You're son goes through 64 ounces in a day pretty easily. Pretty easily. Oh, I, I mean, it. you know, especially yeah. when he's got but sixty hold it. So you so you know, sixty four ounces. No, no, I get weeks. you. I know, but I'm saying he does that, he'll do that within one like one or two practices. That's not counting what he drinks the rest of the day, whether it's with lunch or with its yeah. you know, whatever it is. I'm saying that he'll drink that with his lacrosse and his soccer practice or his You're one you're one of those I, dads. I'm what? Here, drink I, this. I drink more. Yeah. 
Look, John, I've seen it. I've seen it change my career in fighting. I didn't drink any water at all. I didn't drink any uh, electrolytes at all. And I noticed that my performances, I knew how good a shape I was in, but my, my, my muscle fatigue and everything, it would happen within a round and a half to two rounds of sparring. And I just couldn't figure out why I just mentally didn't realize I'm like, cause I was drinking protein shakes. I'd have like a lemonade at lunch, you know, with sushi. And then, you know, like I'd, I'd drink, you know, and you had your no, Coca-Cola. I, I gave that up around four weeks out from the fight. <laughs> but, you know, I had three protein shakes a day after every workout. I just thought that that was enough water. I thought that was enough. It's, they're completely different. You need to consume water yep. and electrolytes. Body breaks it down differently. And so that was something that, I, that changed my career after I started doing that. I started having better performances. I had better training sessions. And I saw the growth in my body as well. I started building muscle a lot faster and a lot better. I was becoming more lean, but also uh, filling out a lot better. So this is something that I think is very important for young athletes as well. So, um, don't overdo it. I don't like to overdo things with them, but I do want them to, uh, drink water. I've had this conversation with, uh, Bobby Lashley, with Rich Chow, with other, uh, other fathers that have athletes, you know, that are training right now. And, uh, they all are loving the product right now, especially for their kids, especially here in the Texas heat, okay. man. It's, you know, 96 degrees today. Yesterday was 101 yesterday. It's just getting a little bit hotter right now. It's starting to brew. Starting to brew a little bit. Always so, brew it. Always um, brew it. But yeah, so go ahead and check it out. You guys can hit our link down below. It's the element right there. You guys can check it out down below. If you buy the mixture packets and also now available is the sparkling, uh, you guys can purchase and any, with any of the purchases through our link. And you can also use that link over and over again for purchases. Any purchases, they will send you a free sample pack or they will send you a bonus package of something that's maybe new in the product. Like if they have a watermelon that's coming out or if they have a new flavor that's coming out, they will send that to you to let you guys try out all their new stuff. So sometimes they may send you like a little Yeti sample. They may send you a hat. They may send you a shirt, whatever it is, but they will send you some sort of bonus with every purchase. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Check it out. Uh, we, I, John and I love it. So uh, but let's go ahead and jump right into Great. the uh, the PFL, which is first coming up on Friday. Let's and then we'll go, go ahead and jump right into the UFC let's talk go. right after that. Go ahead, John. From Sioux Falls, South Dakota, we have PFL 6, which is the the show that will be the it's part of the season. And this is going to say who's going into the postseason playoffs for the pfl to win the one million dollar prize and the lead fight the main event is brendan locknane who you have met i introduced you to brendan fantastic guy huge for 145 absolutely. pounds absolutely a monster 145 pounds i first met brendan over in russia uh doing his fight there and man i'll tell you what he was just a tough son of a bitch broke his arm in the fight still won the fight I mean, I was like, damn, this kid's good. And he went on the Dana White's contender series. He wins there and Dana doesn't take him. And I was like, well, he just, Dana just made a mistake on that one. He just let a really good fighter go. And Brendan has proven himself with the PFL. He has won the PFL tournament one time, a million dollars in the bank for him. But now he is going after his second one. He actually took the year off, which was smart, I thought, of him. Because you know what? It is a bit of a drag on the body and it's not easy. He's taking on Justin Gonzalez. His first fight, he got six points if we're going to go off of the PFL thing. But it was a fight that was stopped early. No doubt about it. Uh, but, you know, I'm not saying he wasn't going to win it. You know, I don't know, that was, you know, definitely could have been part of the equation. But it was stopped a little <clears throat> bit early. But this fight against Justin Gonzalez, this is the kind of fighter you're looking at that can give Brendan some trouble because of his wrestling. He's got a good wrestling base. Is he going to use it against him? I hope so, because that's what's going to make it a good fight with Brendan trying to stop the takedowns and trying to knock Justin into the second row. Yeah, Justin Gonzalez, though, look, he's a very talented fighter. He just needs to stay focused on what he's doing right there in front of him. He can't worry about the fights that have happened before in the past. John, he came into Bellator on fire, right? Like He was unbe yeah, he came undefeated. In undefeated. Then he had a, you know, a tough loss to Aaron Pico. Uh, it was a grimy fight. Mm -hmm. Basically, both of them getting after each other. It was probably one of the Good best fight. fights I've seen in Bellator. Uh, it was just, it was dominated, I think, by Aaron Pico. But at any moment, you felt like Justin Gonzalez could have could have hit him with a clean shot and knocked him out, or could have just done something, to start changing the tide on that. It just wasn't for, it wasn't his night that night. But overall, it was a fantastic yeah. fight. He's just been struggling to get, I think, get out of his own head and get a win. 
And he's got he's got to start getting focused on that. And if he can do that, I think you're going to see a completely different fighter. Now, Brendan is someone that is extremely talented. He will he will go ahead and dictate the pace of the fight. He will put some pressure. And Justin can't allow him to pressure him and make him fight off of his back foot. He's got to be the one trying to be the hammer and not, not allow himself to be the nail. And I know it's easier said than done, but this is one of those fights that he needs to kind of take it over and start dictating the pace of this fight right from the get. Because I think that Brennan's going to, he has the potential to kind of slow down a little bit. And I think that Justin Gonzalez is someone who's got great cardio and can push this pace for a hard three rounds. Can he do that to Brendan? Can he, can he get him to, to move backwards? Can he get him to work from the bottom? Can he get him to try to keep trying to get back up to his feet? Can, can he? he do it? That's going to be the, uh, that's going to be. It is. It, it's absolutely. But here's the difference. And this is, we always talk about confidence and confidence is absolutely a huge factor going into fights and right now i'm going to be honest with uh justin his confidence mm -hmm. is gone this is a guy that was you know came into bellator his first fight was against uh taiwan claxton who was you know almost a poster child for bellator for a while with the you know air claxton and the yep. big flying knees and everything you know and he take took on you know taiwan claxton he won that fight won it you know fairly well you know, and then he had the the loss to Aaron Pico. And once he had that one loss, it just seemed like everything. He had a good fight with Kai yeah. Kamaka, but and he won by split decision. But a lot of people thought that Kai won that fight. And so you can go and look. He had a fight with Andrew Fisher, and you know he won that one. And he should have. He's just a lot younger, better fighter than Andrew Fisher. Andrew Fisher's a tough dude, but then he had mm -hmm. Mads Burnell and Kizriev. Tough fight. And finally, it was uh, Braga. And he's had just three losses in a row that I think have put him on his heels. He doesn't know what to do at this point. And what he really needs to do is get back to what freaking brought you to mm -hmm. the dance. You, your, your wrestling was fantastic for a while. And you were this grinding guy that just kept after people and wore them down with it. No. He doesn't do that anymore. He's more into the stand-up and trying to be this guy that, you know, technically good on his feet and everything and it's just not no, he's a dog out. fighter he's got to get out there and be a dog fight yes exactly next fight i agree our next fight is we got a different fight logan storley uh was supposed to fight uh i want to say strepanolis but had to pull out so we've got Tripoli. luca pokley and what was supposed to be Tripoli. 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 Okay. yeah Tripoli was this fighter but we got Luca Pokley taking that spot. Luca was on this card. It's just that he's stepping up to take on uh, Logan. We've seen Luca uh, uh, fight multiple times before. He's fought it even up at uh, middleweight. He's at welterweight in this one. Luca has got a dynamite submission game. He really has, he's got the Lucanator, which is a, a submission that is named after him because it's an unusual submission. He's caught people in it. In fact, he caught Dante Skiro in it, a guy that Logan has fought oh, he had did. some problems with. So uh, you know, this is this is a close match. This is a, a fight that you know Logan's coming off of a, a big mm -hmm. time loss and one that you know he was feeling confident going into that fight. It did not go you know well for him. And so this is a fight that Logan needs to get himself back into the mix. Look good. He's got fantastic wrestling. His hands have gotten better over the the years. You know, he's got Robbie uh, Lawler in his corner, you know doing a lot of stuff with him, but just got to see that, you know, this is, this is where Logan is from. He's from Webster, you know, South Dakota, just like, you know, Brock Lesnar, both of them, you know, wrestling at the university of Minnesota out of there. And Logan has just got to get back to who he is. He is a dynamite wrestler that can control a fight and he needs to be very careful. If he does take it to the ground, not to get stuck into something that Luca Pokley yeah, he's just got to be aggressive. If if Logan Storley fights him very similar to how he fought um, MVP, just got after it, got right in his face, and then when the shots and the opportunities presented themselves, he didn't he didn't waste any time. He chopped, the, yeah, didn't, didn't hesitate. hesitate. Got the double lays, got the takedowns, controlled the top position. That's what he's got to do. He's just got to dictate the pace of this fight. He can't allow him to get away with anything, and don't wait for someone to get off on you and then try to react. You've got to you've got to control that pace. By getting right in their grill. The we tone. just talked about this with um, uh, Ikram. And we're talking about with the Rob Whitaker and Ikram. I said, get out there, move your head offline, 
Get it moving like Mike Tyson. You know how he used to throw his uppercuts and move his head offline. Cain Velasquez did that yeah. to um, uh, Giro Dos Santos. He's got to do something very similar. Move your head offline. Get it moving. Punch your way in. Lower the level. Blast double. Hit your single. Whatever it is. But man, this kid can wrestle. Logan Storley can wrestle. Six-time state champ in high school. Oh, yeah. And then also... Is absolutely his wrestling is definitely transferred over to MMA. And he's a four time All American at the University of Minnesota. I mean, I'm sorry, but this guy's done everything, so he can do this. It's just a matter of him getting him out of getting out of his own head, coming out there, being a super aggressive. And we've seen him at a very high level. His first fight with Yaroslav Amosov was a fantastic fight. They were exhausted from the scrambling. There was a lot of submission attempts, a lot of defending submissions. They ended up basically canceling each other out in the last probably three minutes of the third round. They had to stand and bang. It was, it was, uh, they were exhausted. So it was a little sloppy, but those are some of the most exciting moments in fights when two fighters have given it all their all and had to stand and bang it out. True. So I look at Logan, True. if he comes in confident, which I think he will, because this is in Sioux Falls, South Dakota and his, this crowd is going to erupt when he walks in, just like they do every single time he fights there. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing him fight, seeing him get back on track. He's got to be very cautious of the submissions, but I think he's got a good chance of winning this fight. Go ahead. Next fight. Next one is Magomed Umalatov, a stud. <laughs> and look, you just had Ramazan winning the welterweight title over mm -hmm. in Bellator, and now we've got Umalatov here in the PFL looking to take his seat in the welterweight playoffs, going up against Brendan Ward. Look, Umalatov is fantastic. He can get a little crazy at times when he opens up with his hands. He doesn't want to do that against Brendan Ward. He wants to be smart. He wants to use his wrestling, use his distance, and control the fight the way that he's done for 15 fights in a row. Don't go crazy and bite down on your mouthpiece and start being a brawler with Brendan Ward. Yeah, Ward is just someone that he's just somebody. <laughs> you just don't know what he's going to do. Is he going to wrestle? Is he going to bang uh -huh. you out? I mean, I don't know what he's going to do. He's he is so fun to watch now i know his last fight didn't yeah it just wasn't the performance that he was looking for and just was kind of a nah. i think he just came in and just it wasn't happening for him it seemed like he was a step behind on things the fight didn't last long uh you know but in this fight he's gonna have to go out there he yeah, got he hurt which is rare for him yeah. i mean i know i know he's yeah, yeah Don Madge, he, just, man. he comes i was like yeah, Brennan Ward, though, is someone that can put your lights out, but he's one of those guys that will go out on his shield. He will take it, he will deliver it, and he will take it. So Omotov's got to be very careful in these exchanges if he does decide to stand. You got Gabriel Braga versus yeah. Brennan uh, Bubba Jenkins. Bubba I Jenkins. Said, I said Brennan. That's a good I fight. You did say Brennan. Well, they fought a Brendan couple times, too. Ward, it's okay. Yeah, this is, what, this is one of those ones you're looking at and go, Braga is the guy... You know, he went to the finals. He lost last year. Then he lost his father. But God damn, man. You know, he came back in his uh, return fight against Justin Gonzalez because he was supposed to fight in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. They finally pulled him off of the card. Uh, he just mm -hmm. couldn't do it, and I don't blame him. And then came back and had the fight with Justin Gonzalez, and he looked great. You know, it was a beautiful first-round knockout with a, a left hook, I believe. Um, it just looked fantastic. Now, Bubba has looked good but has yeah. struggled you know and you look and you go you know this is a guy who i'm really gonna uh, bubba jenkins has gotten better and better and better with age because he used to be mm -hmm. just a wrestler and he's a great wrestler i'm not you know take nothing from him as far as his wrestling but his wrestling has always been that you know controlling factor his stand-up has gotten really good uh dewey cooper's done a fantastic job in getting Bubba to be a good stand-up fighter, a guy that throws good combinations, he gets his head off the center line, and he uses his hands now to set up his wrestling most of the time. Uh, he's looking great. He's going to have to, in my opinion, get Braga to the ground two times at least in this fight. Uh, if he doesn't do that, then there's going to be the, you know, the possibility that Braga, with his stand-up, he's got explosive hands, he could touch him, but this is a really close fight. Bubba's come a long way. What I mean by that is that Bubba was like a Darian yes. Caldwell. That they they focused so much energy on getting the takedown and controlling that they made themselves True. exhausted. And then when they got back up to their feet at the end of the round or the next round, whatever it was, they were so tired and they were so nervous they didn't get the takedown and they got either got knocked out or they just got beat down for that round and it just ended up looking bad or losing the fight that way. 
Whereas Bubba now he's advanced so much. And I would, I would say Dewey Cooper is the reason being he's way more relaxed on the feet. Sure. The takedowns there. He doesn't need to force it. He can stand enough to actually set up the takedown. So he's not shooting raw dog. Darian Caldwell will shoot from 10 feet away because he's not comfortable yet on his feet after all these years. Whereas I think Bubba Jenkins has made such big strides in improving his striking that his wrestling now is just secondary. Like, look, if I got to use it, I got to use it. I can grind on you, hang on you, you know, and I can land some nasty ground and pound, hover over the top of you, whatever it is. And if we have to, we end up getting back to our feet, I'm, I'm comfortable here. Comfortable enough to at least to set up another double leg or a single leg or another takedown. So I like the strides that he's made. And like he's, he's getting better, like fine wine, man. As he gets older, he's been doing a great job. He seems like he always get further and further into the playoffs or into the finals or into the finals, you know, and coming up short, but he's always right there and he's getting better every single season. It seems like uh, Braga, I think he's fighting with a purpose right now. He just seems like he is. He seems like he's more focused. Ta yeah. Time now has passed. And as most people will say, time heals all wounds. And I think it, it doesn't, it, that was it doesn't, but it's going to take some time, you know? Um, but I do think yeah. that he's, he's, he's fighting with a purpose right now. And so him staying focused, yeah. him knowing, you know, he could have won the million dollars last time. Now this is his time, his moment. What changes can he make between now and then getting to the finals, making his way back to the finals for this next one. Let's go next fight. Yeah. Lorenz Larkin taking on Alan Dominguez. Oh, this is, this is one of those fights. This is a good fight for mm -hmm. Lorenz Larkin. Uh, Alan Dominguez likes to stay on his feet a lot. He likes to, you know, he, he will use a ground game but his wrestling is not super explosive or anything like that. You better be a pretty damn good yeah. wrestler. If you want to get Lorenz Larkin to the ground, he's got super fast hands, super fast feet. He's got, he'll, he'll stonewall you. If, if you go for the takedown, uh, this is one of those ones I look at and I go, well, welcome to the PFL. Alan. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are yeah. definitely taking on a dude who is a, an explosive Fast, good fight. You've got Ramazanov versus Mosayev. Yep. Uh, this is this is a fantastic fight. Both undefeated. This is just a low 17 Jeez. and 12. 17 well, and 7, 0. 17, 0 and 1, 12 yeah. and 0, I think. That didn't sound good, John. I mean, 17 and just, 12. <laughs> yeah, I know. 17 and 12. I'm an idiot. But I mean, look, you take a look at what Mosayev did against uh, Logan Storley in his last fight. My God. I mean, that was just mm -hmm. unbelievable how he dismantled him. You know, and Logan's mm -hmm. a good fighter. And he just from, I'm going to be honest, you know, two minutes into that that first round, it was over. It was like, oh, my God. You know, he is just tearing him apart with big shots. And, you know, he's good. This is, this is, this is what I, I'm going back to it. How do these two guys, how is it that these are the two guys that you're putting against each other? This is like one of those, when a promoter, I, I, I kind of understand, you know, both from, you know, a certain, you know, Eastern European area and stuff, but these two guys are so good, so good. And I don't think, you know, I mean, could they cancel each other out? I guess they could, but man, I'll tell you what, both of these guys are, look out. You mean that one of these guys couldn't um, have fought Uma Uma uh, Uma, Uma Latoff? <laughs> like, yeah, Uma Latoff. Yeah, like, I mean, instead yeah. of Brendan Ward, like one of these guys couldn't have fought him. Well, I don't know. I'm look. I I get what you're saying, John. Look, and this is going to go back to the the argument that I was making the last show. This is, it's, it's, there's, well, it, it's being controlled by someone and there needs to be some way to change that. That's it. They, these well, two guys should not be fighting to see if they get into the next one. No, because like one of them is going to probably yeah. go home. I'd rather see these two guys and you're fight looking, you go, closer to the finals and the semifinals, something like that. This is. Yeah. Put it. I mean, I love it. First, the first round of the, of the, you know, postseason. Yeah. Great. That's okay. I don't have a problem with that, yeah. but <laughs> I mean, I just look at it and go, wow. You know, you we could have had you know. Yamauchi fight. We could have had Korshkov fight. We could have had... Yeah, because Yamauchi only got three. He, Yamauchi beat uh, yeah. Naaman Gracie yeah. by a decision. I would have loved to have seen Korshkov and Yamauchi yeah. fight Musayev and then, you know, switch it up, Ramazama fight the other one. Could have been good. Could have seen that. 
Uh, you know, the guy that I'm, you and I are both probably really high on, and we've been high on him since he came into Bellator, was Hizriev. Hizriev? Just a stud. 15-0, and 0, and he's fighting uh, Barzola. But the, I think this is, I actually like this fight. I actually do, because I, I think this is one of those barometers to see exactly where Hizriev is at, because Barzola is one of those, first off, he's an energizer mm -hmm. bunny. He doesn't get tired. He is, and he puts pressure on you, and he's he's in your face. He is absolutely a tough some son of a bitch, but Hizriev is so skilled. He's gonna have you know Barzola is gonna have problems with mm -hmm. the skill level of Hizriev. How does Hizriev deal with what Barzola brings as far as pressure? That's the real question. We're gonna find out. Yamuchi versus Korshkov. It's a Bellator <laughs> fight. <laughs> this is yeah, Bellator fight in the PFL, which is it's a good fight. I, I actually like it. You know. Korshkov is outstanding in the stand-up. Yamauchi is good, but on the ground, Yamauchi's got the advantage. John, I said this a while back, and I said, look, you know what's going to happen is all, a lot of the Bellator fighters that are not at the championship for Bellator, they're going to end up going to the PFL tournament. And next year, when you do the champs versus champs, it's going to be Bellator versus Bellator fighters. That's what's going to happen. But well, this is the possible. thing. You can tell well, that's not what they want. Because now you have Hizriev fighting Barzola. You got Yamauchi fighting Korshkov. You got Kamaka fighting Car Carvalho. All four, yeah, all, of, all them, of them, Bellator guys. Yeah. So yeah. they're trying to weed out all the Bellator guys instead of having them fight PFL versus Bellator. And look, I know they're all under the PFL banner. Let's not just call them Bellator fighters anymore. Exactly. I understand that. Yeah, they're, they're, yes, all they're all PFL fighters. fighters. But the bottom line is, is they're trying to say, I feel like this is how you see that it's skewed. Why are these guys, when there's other guys, some of these guys have trained with each other. They've, you know, I don't know. It's, it's just... Why not? Well, it's it comes down to this, and this is the whole thing. And, and look, I'm not saying I can go down to the next level because you got Kai Kamaka against Pedro, okay? But Don Madge takes on Naaman Gracie in the next fight. Now, Naaman lost to mm -hmm. Yamauchi by decision in the first round, while Don Madge got that first round submission or knockout, and it was a submission of mm -hmm. Brendan Ward based upon hurting him. And got six points. And so you got the guy with six points going against, against the guy with zero. And Naaman Gracie's got a good chance of beating mm -hmm. Don Madge. You know? And so it's like, I look and I go, why does Don Madge, why is he fighting, why is he not fighting a guy that at least got three points? Mm -hmm. Had a win. You know? But. And we'll not see. only that, but then you win. You beat Brennan Ward by, you know, submission, rocked him, whatever it is. But now you're the number two fight on the card. Very strange to me. Very strange yeah. to me. And you got Tyler Diamond versus uh, Brett Johns. Look at Tyler Diamond looked really good in his last fight. Brett Johns looked really good in his last fight. You know, uh, Brett Johns lost it, but you got to look at, you know, who he was fighting against and everything. And uh, Tyler Diamond is that guy that, you know, he, he gives people problems. He had a beautiful fight against Otto mm -hmm. Rodriguez in his uh, opening round. And now he's going to fight Brett, but that fight against Otto, he did everything yep. right. Everything right. I mean, he just looked fantastic. Brett, you know, is in that position. Yeah, he lost, but he lost mm -hmm. to Hizriev. He, he took on one yeah. of the better freaking guys out Hizriev. there. Yeah. So, yeah. So. I think it's going to be one, one of those them. nights. But, hey, make sure you guys tune in. This is Friday night, correct, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Friday. So, make sure you guys tune into the PFL. This is the to see if they get into the playoffs. It's going to be a good night of fights, man. I'm kind of excited. I want to see um, how, on, ESPN. on ESPN. Yeah, ESPN+. Plus. Um, before we move on, though, guys, I want to make sure you guys understand this next uh, UFC fight card, UFC 303. Uh, these betting odds are brought to you by BetUS. And now we're going to bring you guys some odds. They're weighing in on the odds. We're going to weigh in on a couple odds that we think are you guys maybe potentially have some money. And especially after I looked at the BetUS odds. Ooh, I want to go to prop bets. Man, I got to go. I got to <laughs> see. Look, uh, let's go ahead and talk. Right. Let's start off first with the uh, main event. Let's go ahead, John. Let's go ahead. The main event. Look, this is this is a rematch. This is the fight that Alex Pejia won his uh, light heavyweight title on, like, taking on Yuri. Uh, it, there was some you know, people saying, oh, it got stopped early. I didn't think it did. I mean, yeah, you could have always let Yuri get killed more. 
but he was hurt. <laughs> I mean, he was hurt. It was a, a lot of people complain about it, and it's like, no, <clears throat> you know, it was time to get him out. Now he's back. Let him go after the the fight and the rematch. You look at this, and it's it's one of those. Alex is thirty six years of age. I want to say, but you know his fight career. He hasn't taken a ton of damage. He's got the one knockout against that uh, Israel Adesanya landed on him. You know, other than that, you know, his first uh, his first MMA fight that he lost was you know a guy that you know pressured him and you know, made him wrestle and things like that. He's thirty six, but as far as a fighter. He's young, you know, and so I look at it normally, generally, usually I'm going to say Yuri being a guy who's 31 years of age, he's got the advantage in this. He's a little bit younger, everything. I don't think he does have the advantage where he's got the advantage is he does things in an unusual fashion. Alex does things in an unusual fashion. But the one thing that I will say that if it goes to the ground, I think Yuri can cause more problems if he gets to the top position, if he gets underneath. Uh, Alex, I don't see him being able to do a lot to get rid of him, even though he had some beautiful uh, work against Glover Teixeira, who we know is fantastic on the ground, you know, and he swept him, you know, he swept him in that fight. So that's when he, he won the title. So I look at this as this is an, close to an even fight. This is one of those ones. What's the odds on it by Bet All right, US? So Bet US has Yuri Pacheska at plus 110. You got Alex Perhe at minus 140. And the over on it is minus 170 at one and a half. Over at one and a half, what minus a half. 170. Yeah. One and a half, John. This is a five round fight. I know. I, I don't see it going uh, the distance. I'm being honest about that, but I don't think it's going to be over and around. You don't think half. it's going to be over one and a half? I don't think it's going to be over at, at, at seven and a half minutes. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to be over. I think they're both going to be in there still. Okay, okay. So you're thinking that it's going to be the over is going to be minus 170. So you'll put the 170 down. I would take the over. I would take the over over as well. Yeah. I would definitely take the over. Uh, You know, I had some concerns about this, and you and I were talking about it beforehand. Is I mean, I had heard that he wasn't able to really train a whole lot because he had, you know, some broken toes. Uh, You rebuttaled that right away. What did you say? Look, he's been he's been doing a lot in the sparring. He just he's not been kicking a lot, and that's smart. You know, you got to back off if you have had, you know, broken toes or anything like that. So he's backed off, but he has not been backing off on the sparring. He has been going after some very tough people. He's been taking on uh, guys that are heavyweight boxers with very good records, other kickboxers. Uh, he's been he's been taking on big, long, lanky people. People that are bigger than him, which takes a lot to be, and he uh, he's been doing very well. His I give it to Alex. Alex gets it. He gets it right now, man. And you talk about first off, he's got that strange it factor. And when I say strange it factor, he's not the guy that talks. He doesn't talk at all. You know, he's he's got that look, but the it factor of people <coughs> like him. They like his walkout, the, you know, the, the strut that, you know, and then the, mm-hmm. ah, with the, you know, the arrow pull and the whole thing with his heritage and the Amazon and everything. People have fallen in love with the guy and they love the fact that he wants to fight. Dana White has got to be looking at Alex Bahia saying, you know what? I just want to tell you, thank you so much because you have made my life so easy in the, when I have a problem, I just kind of turn my head and there's this light heavyweight board or middleweight board at the time. And I look at you and I, I call and you respond and you know, that's what you're, that's what you need if you're Dana. And, and I could understand why Dana absolutely loves Alex. Bahim I right mean, now. I'm going to, I'm going to say this. I really feel like he's probably the biggest star in the UFC right now. Uh, he's, he's definitely. And, and then on top of that, John, like and this, is the, this is a guy that doesn't speak you know, a whole lot of English. Right. And that's why I say he's got that. He's got the X factor. It's a different kind. You know, it's all, it's almost a all panamined, everything that he does physically people fall in love with. 
It's not what no. he says. It's what he, the way he moves, the way he does. Yeah, so it's the, it's the way that like, like when they show that, that, uh, that video or that image of him going down the roller coaster with his kids and his family and they're all yeah. screaming and he's just exactly. sitting there like what? Yep. He's, he's got the same look. <laughs> he's got the look. Yeah. look. It just does, doesn't phase him. And I think that's how he is in fighting. Yeah. Like, look this, all this stuff when yeah. he had the fight with, um, with Hill and he gets hit in the growing and he kind of pushes the ref back. No, no, I'm good. You know, I'm good. Yep. These are moments that just win you over with fans. There's no reason to stop the action and for me to pretend like that hurt. Let me just, let's just keep the ball rolling and let's go. And look for what he's accomplished in such a short period of time. And I think he sees the, the writing on the wall, it's 36 amazing. years old. I only have another, maybe two years at max to fight at this type of level against these young, these young agree. studs that are coming up. And the level, yeah. let me so do it. Let now. me make as much money as I possibly can. And if I look at this weight division, this weight division is one of the weakest, if not the 85 also, he's got two of the weakest weight divisions for him to go ahead and take over. And I'm glad that he came in at this moment because honestly, he's raising everyone else's bar in this, in the 85 and in the 205, because he is treating this as if like, this is his career. A lot of the other fight, I'm not saying they're not treating it like it's, it's their career. But he seems very focused and driven on what his goal is. A, you see him sparring with boxers. You see him kickboxing. You see him working with Tai Tuavasa. You see him doing all these things around. He spreads himself out with everyone. He's always constantly learning. And he's absorbing what other people are giving him. And he's trying to probably give some more feedback. I saw him working some judo with Kayla Harrison. Hello. <laughs> I mean, he's Hello. not to say like, yeah. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not work yeah, with why one not? of the best? I, I, don't, I don't. I don't. What I'm simply saying is, you you find that it's very rare the top level fighters will put themselves out there like that, and he gives zero fucks. He's out there having a good time. He understands what it's going to take to be good. He's working with Glover on the grappling. His grappling has gotten so good in terms of his takedown defense and his ability to get back up to his feet. He did. Did Did you see? You know the whole thing with him and Anthony Smith. No. Dude, you know, he went and he basically told Anthony Smith, tell you what, I want to say it was $100,000. $100,000, I'll I will give you my back. You have five minutes to submit me. If you don't, I win the 100000 Or if I get up, if I get away from you, I win the 100000 If you submit me, you win it. Look at that's That's mm -hmm. saying I have some confidence in what, I, you know, my ability. I agree with you. Just just saying it is okay. Saying I'll put a hundred thousand dollars on it. No, that's pretty good. Well, <laughs> here's another little take, and I know I know that DC says a bunch of wild and crazy shit all the time, you know. And he was interviewing Islam Mahachev, and he was like, "Man, he's like Alex Wahey is so strong that I think if he trained wrestling for three or four years, you know, two to four years, that he could become Olympic gold medalist." And of course, Islam's like, no, brother, Dagestan way up here, you know, Brazil, Brazilian wrestling or whatever. He's like, no, but if you, if he trained wrestling, just strictly wrestling for four years, he could become a, he's like, no, brother. He's like, no. Cause it's like, it'd be like Sadulai. It'd be, it'd be like top level guys. He's like, no. Yeah. Sadulayev? Like, no. no, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and and so and, and but but DC is like look I felt him he clinches his ability his strength he's like it's just he's so big and I've always said this is that that body style is perfect for this sport he's so big yeah. and strong and size and height and reach and range and and length yeah he's got length just coming out his ass gazoo. his legs are long his arms are long you know and he's and he's got punching power. His kicks are hard and heavy. His punching power, yeah, power. everything is powerful. And he, and he does it in an unorthodox yes. relaxed, fashion. Very relaxed, composed, yeah. and he goes hard when yeah. he needs to, doesn't go hard when he needs to. Fantastic, fantastic fighter. I think he's a stud. But look, John, if I'm taking this fight, though, I'm going to – now that you've talked me into it, I would probably go Alex Bahia at the minus 140, but I'm also taking the over at the minus 170. And, and that's I'm doing why you both. do it. Yeah. I would do this the same God, thing. See, I knew, you, I knew you'd take my Boom. Advice. Look at you. <laughs> All right, the co-main event is Diego Lopez and versus Brian Ortega. This is something I love John this. I love this fight. Fantastic. I love it. It's fantastic. I love Diego Lopez. I love what he's done since he's come into the UFC. I like the way that he came in in his first fight, you know, last minute against, you know, uh 
as well i can't say his first name it starts with an m mokayev was it mokayev as evolop but uh, I mean, he just absolutely put on a performance in that fight because we know how good Evloff mm-hmm. is. He's freaking f- a goddamn beast. And Diego Lopez, on last minute, put up one hell yeah, of dude. a fight against him. And, and I look at it, and I, I look at Brian Ortega, and you know I've known Brian forever. And I look at his last fight, you know, against Yair. He looked fantastic. I look at, you know, both of these guys together. Obviously, you know, people are going to know more about Brian because he's been there longer, but Diego's had more fights. Diego is a stud as far as, you know, he's got good ground. Is it good enough ground to deal with, you know, Brian Ortega? Not too sure. It could be. But I'm going to say that if Brian Ortega is the underdog in this, I'm sure. Let me give you some word of advice here, buddy. Be, be, be shocked. shocked. Be shocked. Bet US has got Brian Ortega at plus 110 and Diego Lopez at minus 140. And on the over under, you got the over at one and a half at minus 215. It is going to go to the over, but I'm not putting 215 down to go to the over. Um, there's a, there is a possibility yeah. that Diego Lopez can catch him with a big shot. And I also think there's a possibility that Brian sure. Ortega could jump triangle or guillotine. How, how many people How many people have, have put Brian or, away nah, with a big none. shot? None, but the, it it just could happen at any moment. It could. We know that. Sure, it could. Yeah, that's, but that's John, funny. Brian Ortega at plus one ten. Hello. Yeah, taking it all day. <clears throat> Anytime I have a guy that's the underdog and he absolutely can win that fight. Hello, it's just simple. Makes my life. It's easy. a three round fight. And I think Brian Ortega, he's he's been proven, look, in five-round fights, he will tend to slow down a little bit in like the fourth and the fifth, but he still comes out. He still comes forward. He still comes aggressive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Diego Lopez, though, he's yeah, he's a, a dog. dog. He's an absolute dog. He's one of my favorite fighters to watch, hands down. Um, but I look at Diego Lopez right now as just the confidence and all-time high. But if he puts himself on the ground with, with uh, T-City, it could be a quick night for him. So sometimes this is going to be a fun fight. Sometimes, you know... And look, I, I, I'm being honest. Diego Lopez's ground game mm-hmm. is really good. It's really good. I've watched him in grappling tournaments. He is a damn good grappler. It's just Brian's got certain things that he does. He is so good at this, the transitions and the setups for him. And, you know, I look, Volkanovsky was the only guy I've ever seen get away from him when he had something. So... We'll see if Diego can be the, the second. Do you guy. think Diego can get the submission? No. No. You don't. I don't. Okay. Nope. All right. I think he can okay. win, but I don't think he's going to. If submit. he does win, you think he goes the over? I just think Brian's so. T City's so hard to finish. If Diego, if Diego wins, it will definitely okay. go to the over. It'll be it'll be third round. So or and then you, what you're saying is that Brian games. Ortega, if he wins, it'll be probably the under one and a half. Submission wise, yeah, I can see Brian. I can see Brian catching something somewhere, end of the first, you know, into the second, possibly depending upon how much damage was done. I could see that because he's good in those. Brian's really good at catching people dry. Mm. You know, he catches the neck really well. He's got a he's got a fantastic guillotine. Uh, obviously, his his triangle is outstanding, and his setup for it, you know. But Diego's going to know. Diego's yeah. not stupid, and he's going to know that setup, and he's going to he's going to recognize it because he's looked at it on tape too many times. Right now, there's the 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 part that I look at that's good for Brian is you took this fight like you were Evaloff, and you don't have a lot of tape on a guy like mm-hmm. Diego Lopez. That they surprised you, and he did, you know. And so now Brian can look and see, oh, he's mm-hmm. good here, he's good here. Where Diego's been watching Brian True. for a while, so he knows everything. That he True, does. but I look at, on the Bet US odds. I'm probably taking T City at plus one ten now. Well, I'm all day I'm long. All right, next fight. Yeah. Anthony Smith taking on Roman Delice. This is for the light heavyweight division. Anthony coming back pretty goddamn fast, man. He uh, just had a fight. Yeah, look, he just had a fight, but I think that's when he has his best performances. You stay active, you stay busy, it is. just keep doing it. Absolutely. Look, he had that he had a fantastic performance being the first guy to beat uh Vitor Petrino. 
And man, I'll tell you what, he looked mm-hmm. good doing it. And that's, I love the fact that he said, you know, no, give me a fight right away. You know, trying to come back. He went in there for uh, mm-hmm. Olberg. He took that fight with Olberg and then Olberg pulled out, but he stays and they bring in Roman Delice. That's a good opponent for him. Um, and Delice coming off of a loss as well. Yeah. Tough loss, but, but a tough loss at 185. This one's at This is true. This is true. I wonder how much of that weight cut had a, it was affected him. I mean, maybe he needs to I don't be know. at 205 and just stay at 205. Maybe he see. does. Maybe he does. But the, but the length and size yeah. of Anthony is going to cause well, you got Anthony problems. Smith at plus 115. Roman Delisi at minus 145, even though it's at 205. Yeah. Wow. wow. Hey, if you want to make some money, man, where Bet US I, is the place where, to do it. Hold it. Where, where, the hell have I, where the hell have I been that all of a sudden they... I yeah I know that Anthony's had some losses. You've been in your you know, barn, John. What do you mean? You've been? you've been in your barn, <laughs> living in the farm. <laughs> but if you take a look at Roman Delice against his, you know, Brennan Allen, Emanoff. Oh, sorry, Emanoff. sorry, it wasn't Brennan Allen. You're right. It was Emanoff, and man, Emanoff yeah. lit him up on the feet, and right, and people are not giving uh, Anthony enough credit. Anthony was a good stand-up yeah. fighter. He's got a good he's got a good submission game. You know, his weakness is going to be, I guess if you want to say wrestling is his weakest area. But I could see where Roman could take him down, but he's going to have some problems even there. Yeah. I don't he's know. There's no slouch off of his back. He's pretty good. You know, God, no, his ability man. to get yeah. up, you know, he's going to have to be able to get up a couple of times. He's got a good hook sweep. Uh, you know, and Roman Delisi, um, he looks physically strong. But I, I don't know if he's well, he going to be able to carry that weight so well. So I'm saying Anthony Smith at plus 115. And uh, this fight going over minus 120 at two and a half. So at a minus 120, or you can go under at minus 110 at two and a half. So I would probably, I would just probably go bet straight up and I'd take Anthony Smith on that bet at minus 110. Yeah. Uh, next fight. Myra Bueno Silva taking on Macy Chasson. Hmm. Macy's been looking good, you know. You got you got to go look at Myra had the she got to fight for the title, uh, didn't work out for her and stuff. But um, she had a tough fight against mm-hmm. Raquel. Macy's been fighting very tough. She's been looking good. What's the odds on it? But I'll tell you what, Macy might might be the favorite in this fight. Uh, yes, yeah, she is the favorite, but not by much. Pretty much even money, minus one twenty, and then uh, Myra is minus one ten. I mean, I look at it. I look okay. at it this way, though, too, is that Myra? What is she? How is she going to be after coming up short for the title? Sometimes fighters need a, t- a chance to True. reset, you know. And this is going to be a hard True. fight for her to reset on. And there's no easy money after you fought for the title. They don't. They don't come back and do you any favors, mm-hmm. man. They, because normally, what happens is right before you fight for the title, they ink you to a new contract because they're like, yep. "Oh, we're going to pay you some more now. So if you win, here's your pay per view money. And if you don't win, we're going to give you a little bonus for getting to the title." Okay, which is great. But also, we've got you locked down now for six more fights or eight more fights, whatever it is. But since you're taking a, a bigger pay, we're going to give you some tough fights after that because we want to burn you out and have you just basically murdered out there. <laughs> Why are you so <laughs> negative? Not being negative. Uh, but let's see, let's see how Myra performs after uh, coming up yeah. short for the title. Uh, next fight. Let, let's go with the uh, first fight on the main card. It's a... Uh, this is one a lot of people. I've heard a lot of people say, "Oh, it's it's not a good matchup." I think it's a great matchup. Ian Machado Gary against MVP Michael Venom Page. This is one of those ones. You know, Ian's undefeated. He talks a lot of crap, but he backs it up. Been a little quiet this time He's though, John. Doing... No, oh, he, he just has spouting not. off because he wasn't spouting off until oh, about a week ago. Oh my God, though. he has spouted off about you know what. Michael Venom Page has no no idea mm-hmm. as far as he's not going to be able to touch him. The speed difference is going to be massive. Oh, dude, all these things. I'm like, wow, wow I like that confidence. Not that I agree with it, <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> so I'm really interested in this fight. This is one that uh, he basically said, you know, the whole thing about mm-hmm. Bellator. And, that you know, there's a huge difference between Bellator and the UFC. And I'm like that what kevin mm-hmm. holland just said when he faced him the, in the first one but okay but i do think it's gonna be an interesting fight i think ian is really good and has a very good stand-up game and he's gonna you know he's gonna want to be uh taking on a guy that's 
unusual in Michael in the way that he <coughs> attacks things. Uh, Ian doesn't, you know, it's not that his style is unusual. He's just, but he's got fast hands. He gets off the center line uh, when he throws. He moves in and out very well. So, I the only thing I I'm looking the only thing that could happen is it ends up where Ian looks and is like, oh, I'm not sure, and he kind of stops being offensive and then michael many times wants to be the counterfighter and he stops kind of being offensive so i'm just hoping that this that's exactly what i was thinking may happen is that ian machado is going to realize how fast mvp is and then he's going to get real hesitant to throw because he doesn't want to leave himself out of position and yep. mvp is going to be the counter striker like he always is waiting for you to waiting. make a move and then he's going to just touch 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 and it becomes a, a point fighting situ situation yeah, but then there's not that much coming his way, so he slows down yeah. his progression. The only thing that I think we may see, which I think people maybe are overlooking, we may potentially see Ian Machado shoot. There might be a chance that he wrestles because I remember the fight that he got dropped. I can't remember. Good, he can he can wrestle. He can, he doesn't have the he wrestling doesn't. credentials to take I, MVP down. MVP's too good good at. His I would agree now. with you on that, John. But also, Ian Machado is not a small guy. So physical size, like height, reach, all those things, he's going to be able to get into that clinch a little bit, I think, and maybe try to muscle him down. It's not, I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't suggest doing that, but if he is able to get within yeah. arm's length to grab him when they get into exchanges, I think there might be a chance that he grabs he, him and takes him down. Well, he is the one guy, I mean, MVP is six yeah. foot three. Ian Machado is six foot three. So they're the same height, mm -hmm. and but Kevin Holland. Yeah. It's six foot Let's three. Let's get into four. this though. Is that if you take a look at Ian Machado, though, he's a very traditional style kickboxer, long push kick, leg kicks, that type of stuff. Uh, traditional like jab, right hand, left hook. You know, he'll throw basic, mm -hmm. you know, combinations in kickboxing. Where I think he may have some success is a little bit how Douglas Lima had the success the first time is when he kicked the calf out. So with, with MVP bouncing around the way he does, the way he lunges in a lot, if you can catch him while he's coming in on the lunge in, you can sweep him off his feet, and that's how you get the takedown. That's one. That's also a way that you can actually just control him a little bit more is go for the calf kick, go for the ankle kick as he goes to lunge in. You just got to be careful you don't get hit with the clean shot, focusing on just the leg kick or the calf kick. But I am excited yeah. about the fight because I want to see how it turns out. You know, MVP being 37, oh. 38, whatever it is now. I mean, I want to see him get to the, the rise as fast as possible. I think he's in that range, 37, 38 now. He might, he might be 30, 36, okay. 37. I, I don't think he's 38. He's pushing yet. it. Huh? Somewhere around there, yeah. Is he? George. 37, hey, George. 37. Where are we at? 37. 37. When's 37. his birthday? Can you tell me when his birthday is? Yeah. Do you want to marry him too? Uh, oh, his wow. Birth sorry, sorry. Uh, his <laughs> birthday. Smart ass. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yeah, I was too busy being a smart ass to actually. Have yeah. Answer. Uh, April seventh. Man, April. Oh, so he April just 7th. turned thirty-seven. He just turned thirty-seven. Okay. Young Jamie wow. would have had that. Like the fact that you're comparing him to Young Ooh. Jamie, he's probably pretty proud about that. <laughs> I know. He's I'm pretty high, like man. a chin level. <laughs> All right, next fight. Woo. All right, we've got Joe mm -hmm. Pfeiffer. I, people have said I've said that wrong before. I, I thought it was Pfeiffer. But. No, we no, we called him Pfeiffer, or I called him Pfeiffer. I think you called him Pfeiffer. Okay. Yeah, you got it right. Pfeiffer. I got it wrong. I'll, I'll take the blame on that. Okay. So Joe Pfeiffer taking on Mark Andre Berrio. This is a good fight. This I really like this fight. I mean, Pfeiffer's strong. He comes after people. Mark Andre Barrio is a tough some bitch who comes after people, takes big shots, uh, tough as hell. I really like this. I think I do think that Pfeiffer has a little bit more as far as tools in the in the in the toolbox. He can do a little bit more. Mark Andre is more of that guy that he wants to stand up and brawl and be in that tough uh, contest with you. Pfeiffer can take it to the ground. He can do a lot of good work down there. But I think this is a, a really fun John, fight. John, you're forgetting one thing. Let's Piper's coming off a loss. That's one. Yeah. Two is, he also showed that outside the first round, he's not the same fighter. So if you're if you're yeah. Mark Andre Barrio, I'm trying to drag you into the second, into the third round. Whatever I can do to get you there and put pressure on you. Yes, trying, trying to. to. 
But I don't can know. you? I, I, that's why we fight the fight. But I'm going <laughs> to, but if, but if I'm Mark Andre, I'm actually like push, punch into the clinch. I'm wearing on you. I'm hanging on you. I'm, but the, but here's the difference. And this is, as we've always said, look, yeah. there's levels. And going into the, the Hermanson fight, it was that question of, look, has Pfeiffer had enough quality opposition to take on a guy that's as veteran experienced as Jack Hermanson? And he wasn't. That was just, that's one of the things that happens. And there comes that point where, you know what? You think you're ready, but you're not quite ready for that next one. And you learn from it. And we're going to see if he learned from it. I we're going to find did. out. But look, if if you're talking about it, though, Joe Pfeiffer is minus 310. And you've got Mark andre at plus 235. Well, that's a, <laughs> it's telling you who the odds yeah, makers are. They're, they're really on that bandwagon with the Joe Pfeiffer bandwagon. Yeah, they are definitely on the on the Pfeiffer bandwagon. Next fight? But okay. I, I, I can understand why. All right, next fight. We got Cubs, Swanson fighting since... 1911. Don't do that to him. Don't I do love, that to him. I love Cub. John, he came I after Cub, I did. Man, <laughs> like that's like, this dude. Cut, you know, and the reason I'm saying that is Cub's been around for you know so long. And you know, I did you know early fights, did his brother's fight stuff, and he's such a good freaking guy. He really is a good guy. And uh he's taking on a guy in Andre Feely who is you know what? Andre's he's right at that, you know, he's got he's he's not young anymore. You know, he's not old, but he's not that young guy. And uh, very similar in records, very similar as far as uh, toughness. Andre Feely's tough as hell. Cub is tough as hell. Both with good stand-up, both with a good good ground game, just different the way they they apply it and stuff. So this is a really fun Cub matchup. just got the higher level of competition that he's fought. And nothing against Andre Feely. Yeah, he hasn't I fought agree. the level of Cub. Cub's fought the who's who from Jose Aldo all the way up. You know what I mean? Um, well, that Jose Aldo no, fight it didn't last long, last but it was also very young in his career. I think what was his second or first, second or third fight, something like that. It was right. Of, like, no, yeah. God no, God it was the no. second or third fight in the WEC, right? You're talking about Cubs second or third? It might have been his second or third fight in That's the WEC. Second or third fight in the WEC, but it was, but it wasn't in his second or third fight as far no, as he fought problem. Jose Aldo. Well, that, well, that was oh, for the okay. title, correct? Yeah, I know. I'm not sure it was. I think it was. I think Aldo was the champ already. Was Can it? you look that up, George? I think Aldo was the champ, and he, he fought Cub for. I think he fought Aldo for the title of the WC. I don't. Like it, I don't think that. I don't think that was a, no? a okay. championship fight. Well, it didn't last long to even find out. You got it yet? But no, it was fast. It but was Cub Swanson. Seconds. Cub Swanson is a stud. He's been around. He's been around for the longest time. He's fought the who's who. He's yep. at a plus two hundred, John, and Andre Feely is at a minus two fifty. I'm just going that you know that odd is, it's on yeah. age. It yeah, just really that is. was a no contender shot. Gotcha, gotcha. But John yeah. Andre Feely's been looking good as of lately. He's had some ups and downs, but he's actually you can see it looks like he's matured inside that cage. Yeah, but he just had. His yes, last he was. Fight was a loss. It was. So, so was Cubs. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> I know that, but one this is 40 is years of And it. I think this may carry over. I think is I'm getting the feeling too, that this might be Cubs last fight. Yeah. Sounds because up. there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of like a lot of talk with, about his family, a lot of talk about, you know, his training regiment. There's, there's been some media out, you know, taking pictures of him with his, his kids. It's almost like that feeling of like life has moved on. And I, I can, I can respect that. I totally respect that. I'm actually, uh, it's awesome to see. So I, I want to know. I would like to see him go out on a win, obviously, you know. But at the demise of Andre Feely, that sucks because I like Andre Feely a lot. I and like Andre Feely too. Yeah, Cubs last. You know, fight was and, a and win. When, 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 I want to. Who's Cubs? Cubs? Yeah, he'd be uh, do 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 Hakeem. Do a do do what do a do. Oh, that would that would do. There's that would do. There's the that would do. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I know. I know. Feely's last fight was Danny Ige. And uh, Dan looked good in that fight. But his one before that was Lucas Almeida. And, man, I'll tell you what, um, Feely mm. looked really good in that fight. So right. we're going to see. All right. Any other fights on here you want to talk about, John? Well, I, I do want to say Charles Jordan, who I really mm -hmm. enjoy watching. He's He is the prelim fight in here. And you've also got the kid, Peyton uh, Talbot, 
who is young, undefeated, looks good. Um, he's he's going to be someone to to. People John, he's a you. minus two thousand. Yeah. yeah, that's my reaction face. <laughs> okay. He was a that's minus two thousand. That's, oh, that's his reaction right there. Look at Jeez. George. What? <laughs> yep. He's a minus two thousand and Man, a plus eight fifty for Giannis uh, Jamori. Yeah. Man. That, they're not doing him any favors. And then you know what? I always got to give honorable mention to Andre Arlovsky, man. Andre, Jeez, there you bro. go, baby. He's been around since before me. Arlovsky's still doing it. Crazy. That dude's He's crazy. crazy. He is a crazy He's nuts. Bitch. Going up against what? Bidet? Yep. Martin Bidet? Uh, hey, that's going to wrap up our UFC top. Hope you guys enjoyed this conversation and this talk. Make sure you guys go to BetUS for all your betting odds. Hit that sports book up. And hey, man, use the link down below. They will give you 125% bonus on your first three deposits make sure you guys use our link down below hope you guys enjoyed this show and uh, i want to also say something that john said in the very beginning uh, we had john nash on to talk about the uh the class action lawsuit and how it's been put on hold until the judges review this friday i wanted to remind people this will be a separate clip it will not be included on this show so that will drop also i know john you know john said that <laughs> but no, that. that will be a separate clip and there's a lot of information if you are a fighter make sure you share this that sh that uh show to all the other fighters out there so they know what they have to do to go ahead and get their uh their money or their winnings from this class action lawsuit so you know where to go what paperwork to fill out what emails to respond to all of those things we talked about in this show it's a separate clip so you guys don't have to download the whole show just take that clip and listen to it and actually get all the information from it. I want to thank you guys so much for supporting us. Also hit the subscribe button down below for our YouTube channel and our clips channel. And lastly, become a member of the Wayne in podcast. We have two tier system. We have the 199, which will give you the icon next to your name. We, when we do live chats, we will go ahead and make sure that we respond to your guys' comments and your questions uh, in our live chats. Also, we have a 499 available there. That will give you options. That will be make you available for memorabilia stuff, for to, to win prizes, all of those things. And we'll be doing some of that here hopefully shortly. So hopefully you guys uh, sign up down below, become a member of our of our Wayne In Podcast channel. I want to thank you guys so much. And John, take us away, bud. For everyone out there, I hope you enjoy the fights this weekend. PFL on Friday, UFC 303 on Saturday. Tune in because I'll be there watching too. See you.